the line. I just want a little. I just want a cough button. Yeah. <laughs> so I push it, so then cough. Just That's me. I've got what I want. I've got mute buttons I'm here. Watch. I can now. mute you right now. See, now you're muted and. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this week's Cougar Chat. I'm Father Joe. Father, we didn't do a mic test. Are I sure my mic before you okay. got here. Don't worry, so everybody. My mic is working. Yeah, it looks according to the little screen. It's working. Uh, who are you? Who am I? I am the chaplain here. In case you forgot, I am Mr. Salpa. I'm the dean of social. Well, no, now we have your server. Dean of intellectual formation. <laughs> you don't even remember your job title. <laughs> People were just yelling at me. Uh, so I saw the new Cabrini movie this weekend. Have was you it seen good? That? No, it no, was no. Very good. I have not. Yes. You know, sometimes you never know with these Saint movies because the production quality can be a little poor. But this one was very well done. It's by Angel Studios, the same people that are behind the uh, the Chosen series. Okay. So yeah, it was very good. It even made me tear up a little bit. And I don't really cry at movies ever, except for one time on an airplane, which was actually for Despicable Me. It's kind of embarrassing. But <laughs> something about being I, on airplanes. Makes... I, I thought you were going to say you cried during the Bar- Barbie movie. No, 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 that would have been worse. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> I still have not seen that one. But um, anyways, Cabrini was very good, so I recommend it for everybody. It's worth the viewing. It's kind of long. I think it was close to three hours long. It was like two and 45. It's definitely high quality. I mean, oh. Angel Studios does good work. They even had... Um, Is Jim Caviezel in it? No, he's not in it. He's Really there is a, a, a mainstream Hollywood actor. I should have looked this up ahead of time. I don't remember his name. All I know is that he was the voice of the king in Shrek. <laughs> John are, Lithgow? Yeah, I think that's right. From the Harry and the Hendersons yes. classic So he show is movie? sort of like the bad guy in the movie because he's the mayor of New York. <laughs> he looks like a bad guy. And uh, John anyways. Lithgow, if you're listening, I apologize for calling, <laughs> saying that you look like a bad guy. So that was great. And then also I went to the school musical over the weekend, which was My Fair also Lady. very well done. I was impressed. We've got a lot of talented students here. The singing was good. They even were dancing. They had some of those guys dancing up there. I heard feedback from Miss Trioko. Someone told him it was the best high school musical production they'd ever attended. That is probably the highest praise you could have. Yes. So way to go, everyone in the musical. Way to go, Chan Sort. It was a lot of fun to watch the show. So, things going on this week. First of all, March 19th is the Solemnity of St. Joseph. That's tomorrow. I might be biased, but this is certainly one of my favorites. It's my feast day. It'll be the feast day for the Joseph House here at school. So, that is a day where we not only should or or, or can, but we should take a break from some of our Lenten practices. So, if you gave up bacon, have some bacon. If you gave up coffee, whatever it is, it's a feast day. Now, Father, we had uh, Mother Amata Veritas on last week, and she got to cho- choose her name. Yes. Did you get to choose your name? Well, this is my baptismal name. Very Joe. good. So, I I mean, my parents chose your it. Your parents chose it. Yeah. So, and you then didn't you change ordained... your name to Father Joe Campbell? No. Typically, when you're a diocesan priest, you don't change your name. I suppose you could. Are you okay with that, or did you ever always want to change your no, name? I like my name. Okay. Joseph. Joe. If you could change your name, what would you? You know what my family calls me? Joey. No, my mom didn't like that, so she never <laughs> let people call me Joey. My name was Little Joe. Little Joe. Is there a Big Joe? Well, my dad was He's Big, Big Joe. Joe. Now, I'm taller than him now, but yeah, so my, my nieces and nephews call me Father, Uncle, Little Joe. Do they really? <laughs> yeah. What is the What is the protocol for that? Do Do family members, are they supposed to call you Father? Do they kind of stick with your birth name? Uh, I mean, it, it depends on the context. If we're around other people, they'll po- they usually call me Father Joe, but if it's just one-on-one, like, my parents just call me Joe. Do you correct lay people if they call you Joe, or, like, uh, is it kind of a I mean, Again, title? it depends on the situation. If it's just a one-off thing, I'm not going to make a big deal about it. But if it was a consistent thing with a staff member, I would probably eventually have a conversation and be like, hey, I'd like you to call me father. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, we're not to the Q&A yet, though. You're getting ahead of us. I have so. a lot of questions, though. So, March 19th then. Also, this week is our big sophomore retreat. It's Wednesday through Saturday. This has been a ton of work for me and the campus ministry team to get it get ready for this. So Fruitful please, work, though. Yeah. So, please, please pray for all of our sophomores that they'll have a, a blessed time on retreat, encountering the Lord. And uh, a couple of details for that. So, the sophomores will go to school like normal on Wednesday, and then after school, they can stick around around. We'll serve them a pizza dinner in the cafeteria at 4.30 p.m. And then the buses will pick them up at 5.15 and we'll head off to Clarkston. So come to school on Wednesday and we'll feed you dinner and then we'll be off after that. And I'll send an email with more details to all the sophomores, but just a little heads up about that. So today is March 18th. Yes. We already talked about tomorrow is the Feast of St. Joseph. Yesterday 
was the Feast of St. Patrick. That's true. So this is kind of like a sandwich day. If this is an Oreo cookie, <laughs> this is like the white cream filling. <laughs> Now, traditionally, we wear green on St. Pat's, correct? Yes. Although not in Ireland. This is an American thing. In Ireland, they don't really do all that stuff. It's just their normal clothes, probably, because they always well, wear green. Well, I mean, they like St. Patrick, but they don't do all the kind of, I don't know, cheesy St. Patty's Day stuff that we do. <laughs> they don't dye their rivers green <laughs> like the Chicago River and no, have their my, parades? My dad's whole side of the family is Irish, so I've heard about all this from them. Do you eat any traditional Irish foods? Like on a regular basis? No, on St. Patrick's. Well, side. if it's offered, yeah, I certainly have the corned beef and cabbage and all that. But one year, one year, father, I, I made. Um, I, I got this in my head. I was going to make a shepherd's pie, and it goes down in history as probably the worst meal I've ever made. <laughs> wow! Like it, even even How as could I was you mess it up. It's so I, simple. I, <laughs> even as I was making it, I'm pretty sure when I put it in the oven, my wife immediately called Domino's to get the pizza because she knew it was going to be bad, and she was right. It was really so. It goes down in history. Is, and we make jokes about it. It's just a terrible, terrible meal. But it was just weird because I like all the other stuff, but maybe just yeah. not. It's like the KFC bowl where they just put all their stuff together. So, are we doing anything here for St. Patty's Day? We kind of missed it since it fell on Sunday. I don't know. Do you think we should be making this decision right now on the podcast? <laughs> or do you think it's maybe something we should have talked about before? <laughs> well, according to the Cougar Connection, it says that we can wear green on Monday, March 18th, in honor of Teachers and priests Day. or I think students. everybody. So, students can wear green. That's Today. what the Cougar Connection says, and that comes out from Mrs. Karen Kevin, so I'm okay. sure it's correct. So, if you're listening on the way to school and you don't have green... It's not too late to turn around and go back. not too late, but don't be late. <laughs> Some people say that I should take out my white little tab in my collar and put in a green one on St. Patty's Day. How great would that be? Yeah. What if you had rotating ones? So green St. Patty's colors. Day, orange for Halloween, <laughs> pink for St. Valentine's Day. Or maybe Day. I should just get a full green cassock, like bright green. That would be Father, quite the look. Now we're on to something here. They, they'll just and, think I'm... And thus you are no longer our chaplain. <laughs> So we, one of the other things, Father, that's been going on is that we we've introduced this tracksuit. Have you seen the tracksuit? It kind of looks like what you wear every day. I know it's sort of funny. <laughs> that one's gonna look like so, me now. But they don't have the collar. No. Would, so and not, I'm not wearing sweatpants, but I do wear black pants. So the new performance tracksuit is designed to be comfortable for our students and also give some sort of uniformity with the clothing and everything they have. So if I'm understanding right, they can wear. The black pants, the black track top that goes with it, and the then a polo shirt, right? Yep, a school uniform shirt. So you can wear that any day. Any day, and it's effective immediately. Students are already ordering them as their their tracksuit uniform option. Yeah, it looks pretty cozy. It's comfortable. It looks neat. It's matching. It's all black, and it's got our logo on it. But it is a little funny, because I've had a very similar zip-up ever since coming here. It was given to me when I first took this job, and I wear it all the time. I was like, oh, everyone's going to have one like me now. <laughs> well, that's why we did it, Father. We said, how can we make everyone look more like Father? So, does that mean I can wear sweatpants now with my clerics? Is, You'll is have time, to talk to the bishop for is that. Is it time for you to just own that? We should that have look? asked We should have asked the bishop when he was here. I do know some other priests who regularly wear sweatpants with clerical shirts tucked in. Are they hoping that no one notices? Or? I just don't think they care. I mean... People certainly notice, but uh, also there was a fundraiser, National Honor Society did one. We don't know the the final result of how much money they raised. They had certain benchmarks. If they made like three thousand, they'd get uh, I don't know what the prizes were. Something four thousand was <laughs> something else, something, and then seven thousand was a half day. I remember the final so, prize. The last I heard, I know for online donations, they were at about fifty five hundred dollars and change. And so I think it depending on the casual day that we had, and um, I believe there were donations set up at the play. Okay. So it, depending on how much they raised on that, we'll determine if we have goal. a half day coming up at some point. Well, as you all probably know, we're blessed here at Lansing Catholic to have Dominican sisters on the teaching staff. We have three at the moment. Two are also at Resurrection Parish teaching the grade schools. Is that we've, right? We've had three since I've been here. This is my third year here. Yeah. And I think we've gone through six of them, maybe. Mm -hmm. and yeah. They're sort of like <clears throat> chaplains where they get reassigned now and then and move to different schools. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we're blessed today to have uh, in our studio the Prioress General of the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, Mother Amata Veritas. Thanks for coming in today. Well, thank you for having me. She was here at school just doing a little visitation with the sisters. And this we, is how we get yeah. most of our guests 
ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. You just see him wandering the halls when we grab him. <laughs> you're, you're like the second local celebrity interview we've had. We had oh, the wow. bishop on recently, oh, wow. and now we've got <laughs> the mother general. So we're doing pretty good. So I have my first question for you is about the naming process. So most yes. of the names are usually a combination of names, saint names. Sister Irenaeus, I know, just took yes. a fabulous theologian. Mm-hmm. But you opted for the Latin yes. Amata Veritas, yes. which did you intend it to be the having been loved, truth having been loved? Beloved truth. Beloved truth. So you mm-hmm. took the, the participle mm-hmm. of, of Amo Amari. And you took the noun of veritas, veritatis. You know, was a you Latin actually teacher. know way more about Latin. <laughs> than one I was, point, I was a Latin teacher, <laughs> and so I was. I'm fascinated by this. Yes. So, how did you come upon that yes. as your name? Yes, that's a good question. My name's a very unusual. It as that it's a Latin both parts. I don't have Mary in my name or Maria in my name. But when we choose a name, we also have a feast day that goes with it. So my feast day explains my name. So my okay. feast day is Trinity Sunday. Very nice. And so Amada Veritas is Beloved Truth. And when I first entered, somebody had suggested to me um, Maria or Mary Veritas, but I didn't really like that, and it didn't stick. And but I really loved Veritas. I really loved Truth. And I just have grew up with just my mom and my dad's deep devotion to the truths of the faith and that they were passed down to us and that there is objective truth. But then God is truth. That that is who God is. You know, God can't, cannot lie to us. He cannot mislead us. And he is, he is only, he he is truth. And so um, when I was discerning somebody else, one of the other sisters just one day said to me, well, what about Amada? So Amada um, there's now I'm not named after her, but there's a blessed Amada. I was going to say because Amada, you could actually pass off as a girl's name. Yes, yes, and it's where you get like Amy and Amanda. All those come oh, are that. all related. So Ama- our Amada is a, a, a blessed of the Dominican order. It's not who I'm named after, but that is the, where we got the name, and it means beloved. And um, she was an early uh, Dominican saint. But then I had so when I was when I was discerning, you know, what name would I submit? I wanted. N- Veritas didn't seem the fullness of my name or or what our Lord was asking. So beloved is love and truth. God, as you know from the catechism, is both love and he's truth. And you really, you need both. And the life of the Trinity. So then as I, I thought my whole postulant year, my name was, I was going to have the, um, the feast day of Pentecost. And then Pentecost, as we know, is in the spring. Pentecost feast day came and went, and I thought, this is not my feast day. <laughs> and I didn't know why, because I had really thought, I had I had really read almost everything on the Holy Spirit at my postulant year. And, um, but then the week later after Pentecost is Trinity Sunday. And as we went through the office, I thought, this is it. This that is my it. name. Mm-hmm. Well, and, great. and God is good. And there's a lot, I mean, there's, I feel like I could write a dissertation on the God is true, that God is love, but it's like that there's a lot of theology of the body connections. Right. There's just, you have to have both. You really, it's a head and the heart. It's well, and, well and the connection true. there to Pope Benedict the Sixteenth and cyclical Deus Caritas yes. Est as well. Yeah, and it's funny naming is, is such an interesting thing because a very similar thing happened when my first daughter was born. We were, we went to the hospital and we had two names picked out. We didn't know which one was going to be, and we were in the hospital for a while, and so we looked up, you know, everything, and one of the names we were toying with was Annie Francis, and the other one was Josephine. Oh, I forgot that my wife will kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Whatever it was, she was going to be born, and because it was taking so long, March 9th is the feast day of St. Francis of Rome. Yes, it is. And so she ended up being, we knew she would be born yeah. probably on March 9th. And if she's going to be born on March 9th, it's going to be that. So wow. it turned out that that was one of the names we were considering, and there we are. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, so, Mother, so some important. of our listeners might not be that familiar with the sisters beyond just seeing them at yes. school here now and then. So maybe if you can, like, give us a, br- a brief overview of how big the order is, what exactly you do, what yes. your role is, and yes. how you came to be the the Mother General. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That's like a lot of questions. I know. That was a lot of questions. I mean, maybe a just lot answer of some of that. <laughs> okay. I'll just answer. I'll, I'll, I'll start with, um, so we're, our mother house here is in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And in the Diocese of Lansing, we're present um, here at Lansing, Catholic Resurrection, our own two schools, the Spiritu Sanctus Academies, um, Ann Arbor and Plymouth, and also FGR. And um, and then we also have at our mother house, our novitiate and our formation. Uh, so the sisters, when you first enter, you're a 
postulant and then your novices. So all of and then so all of us are living at the mother house. So mm-hmm. there's probably around uh, right now around 50 of us there that live there year round. Um, but then what happens is um, our our charism and our apostolate. That's the apostolate is um, is kind of the works that a religious community does. So our apostolate is teaching. And so we teach in, I think we're now in 16 dioceses, and we teach at the, both the high school, the elementary level. We have a couple uh, sisters who teach at the university level now. Um, and, and this is all throughout the country. All throughout the country, yes. So California, New York, Texas, um, Columbus, or Ohio, uh, and uh, uh, all over. Yeah. I missed a couple in there, I know. <laughs> um, but we were, were a community that was founded in uh, 1997 mm-hmm. by our four foundresses, Mother Assumpta Long, uh, Sister Joseph Andrews, Sister Ray Samuel, Sister John Dominic. And um, we've grown. We have over um, 110 teaching sisters right now, and then sisters in formation. Wow. Um, and so, Good for you guys. Yeah, it's exciting. track mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. Every year we host three vocations retreats, and usually, you know, around 90 to 100 young women come um, and discerning from all over the country again to 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 just ask, what is our Lord asking of you? What is it? What does He want from me? What what, what you, path is He? Are you able on? to do any number study if any of those or how many of them come from parishes where you are or, or schools where you're active? Yes, that's a very good question. We have yes, we have a couple vocations of, from schools where where we teach. Um, we and so far don't have someone from an elementary school yet. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. Well, actually, sister, one of the sisters came from did, went to, to middle school down in Holy Family. I take that back in Texas. But um, but we would love more vocations from the schools where we teach. <laughs> we would love it. And yeah. how long have you been the the mother of this whole? Order? Yeah, good question. So Priorish General is uh, head over the whole community, over the whole order, and um, we. I've been Priorish General now. I'm. I'm ending my third year, so this summer it'll be three years. That's the same time as yeah. a chaplain. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Do you Starting have a? Time. Is there a um, shelf life? Yes. Of a prior yes. general. Yes. Yes. Oh. yes. Well, I didn't know what it was going to call. Yes, that's a good question. Term, term, I'm not sure. Is I'm there not sure shelf life because that means I'll expire. <laughs> well, I mean, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll expire. edit that out. And put something more intelligent. <laughs> <You're laughs> expired prior no, like, general. I like my expired expiration date. So fast we, approaching. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we have um, a term of six years. Okay. And then in our constitutions, you can be re, re you can be um, reelected after that for another term. So there's an election. Yes, we have an election. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in 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 all religious life history, Dominicans were the f- first that had kind of a represent re- representative democracy on electing their uh, their their leaders. So their it's your head. own sisters that get to vote. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. White mm-hmm. smoke, black smoke. Yeah. Are we talking <laughs> we here? Bell. <laughs> we, we have a bell that rings. A bell. <laughs> Very good. A bell rings for everything in our life. So, so how often do you get out to the other schools in your yes. community? Yeah. So this, I, I go, you know, it depends where how much I'm traveling and where I'm traveling. But um, I, I definitely go every three years, but sometimes it's a little bit more often. Just for events or things that are happening, sure. I might I might be traveling a little bit more to them. This year, I've tra- I put a lot of miles on my car and a lot of, uh, a lot of miles on my um, frequent flyer. Uh, so I I've been traveling a lot this year, visiting all the all of the schools. Well, we've this loved amazing. having the sisters here. I, I, they're fantastic. They're everyone you guys send to us is always excellent. Oh, so, thank you. What's a, little, a blessing. I'm a little biased. So one of my sisters is in your yes. order. Sister Mary Jacinta. Here's yes. your little shout out. I know you listen to the show. Second one. Didn't yes. you get one? Uh, the one that aired last week. As uh, well? I don't remember. It all starts to blend together. But, yes. So, so yeah, I've been around the community for my whole life because my my sister entered when I was quite young. Yes. And, uh, just yeah, it's a wonderful I've seen order. Father and this, Joe grow up. The, you probably have some embarrassing <laughs> stories. About yeah, it. I we, we did some and now here. he's chaplain with us. But this is the first time I've actually worked with the sisters yeah. in a more um, like ministerial setting. I've been around them my whole life, but usually at coming to the convent, coming for visiting days, and then my own sister, obviously. But uh, this is it's really cool to see them in action and just to see the difference that it makes to have religious sisters around. Oh, absolutely. Just their witness of their prayerfulness. And uh, especially for the young girls here to know that there's a, a role for them also in the church and there's yes. a particular vocation that God might be calling them to. Yes. Speaking of which, if yes. we do have... Uh, 
uh, young girls that are interested, or maybe parents that are interested, where could they go to find out more about that? Was well done, Father. Yes, that was an well excellent done. transition. Yeah, well done. Well, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you have podcast notes in your podcast. We do. There Very are show good. Notes. So I will send you a link, and then also, of course, you can Google it website on our our, our social media, um, SistersOfMary.org. Yeah, okay. yeah, Very good. yeah. We'd love to have our our, our uh, retreats are open to 17 years and older. Great. So it's wonderful. To were have the, would those be held in Ann Arbor? Yeah, we have them at our school at the SSA um, Spiritus Sanctus Ann Arbor School. And how long would a retreat be? For 24 those hours. Who are, okay. Yeah, so. you come in on. It's really simple. You come in on a Saturday, and um, it lasts till about Sunday around two, three o'clock. Okay. So it works out really, really. So it's beautifully. not a huge time commitment, but it could be a valuable yes, experience for yes, those discerning. Yes. Yes, for discerning and just and again, just space and time. What we really emphasize is just kind of that space and time to just give to our Lord and just ask Him what He wants, whatever He wants. And then also, I know when you know these actually these retreats have not changed much since I came on retreat um, many years ago, and I. Uh, it was so to see so many young women from all over the country who were just on fire with the faith, who were asking what God wanted of them. That was as much in my prayer time, but then also just seeing the witness of those other women was yeah, was a big part of my discernment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Mother, for coming on the show, You're taking welcome. time for this. Enjoy your visit today, and maybe we'll get you on the show again some other day. You're welcome. Well, yeah, I'm ever come in the with Holly stories. <laughs> thank you. All the stories all of the Father stories. Joe. We want. To, we'll, we'll just call it the Father Joe story time. <laughs> we'll go at it. Okay, I'll have, to, I'll have to stockpile them. <laughs> thank you so much, Mother. All right, thank you. So last we've got some Q&A. First question is, uh, how about you do this one, Mr. Stolpa? Why do we have the fifth grade visit? The fifth grade visit, so for those who don't know, and it always kind of lines up with the ACT. And so the kids will take the ACT, the pre-ACT in the afternoon. They'll go home, and then a bunch of partner school fifth grade visitors, children come in and they make slime and they do a sing along with Father Joe. Uh, I think they do Cotton Eye Joe, <laughs> and they, I think they shoot baskets, yep. uh, there's a quiz bowl, a trivia game, they do all sorts of stuff. So the question is, why do we do this? So one of the one of the main reasons is that we try to get the kids into the school and get them comfortable here as early as, as, early as we can, so that it's not this intimidating, oh, Lansing Catholic, and you just hear about it in the wind. It's, it's something more tangible for these kids so that when they think about their options for high school, they think, oh, Lansing Catholic, I've been in those hallways. It's familiar to me. Mom and dad, I want to go there. All they do is make slime and shoot baskets. Okay? So, <laughs> and sing songs with Father and Joe. And sing songs with Father Joe. <laughs> so it really is all about comfort and familiarity. So certainly a, a smart, strategic thing to do in terms of enrollment to try to build more connections with our partner schools. Absolutely. All right. Uh, the next question is, why do we not do the sign of peace at Mass? Well, I took the last one, Father, so you should probably handle this one. Yes. So typically at our Mass this year, we don't do the sign of peace. The short answer is because it's optional. And so we just don't do it. <laughs> Wait, I mean, there's a little more to it than that. So we don't do it at the weekday masses in the chapel, like early in the morning, because it's it's quiet. It, there's only a handful of people there, and they're all far f away from each other see, in their pews, so like they can't even shake hands anyway. So we just like don't do it. And then at the all school masses. We used to do it, and it just was becoming very disruptive. Students would start talking to each other, and it would just sort of be this big commotion. And so rather than having that happen, we just omit it, and then it's not as disruptive. Can you omit it from Sunday Masses, or is it just a, a daily Yeah, the ordinary? rubric in the, the Roman Missal says, and if appropriate, the sign of peace may be offered. So it's very generic, very open-ended. Um, so you can do it or, or not do it. Well, that's all we got today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Cougar Chat. Be sure to listen next week as well to find out about all the things going on here at Lansing Catholic. I'm Father Joe. And I'm Mr. Stolpa. Remember, Lansing Catholic, we make faith easy. So tell me your name and what school you're from. I'm from St. Gerard. My name is Ethan Gruber. And what are you excited about on this fifth grade visit today? Um, I'm excited to dig deeper in my faith and to learn more about the school's history and more about the school and why like I love I really want to go here. Awesome. Thanks for coming today.
So, what's your name? Alina Cuddyback. And what school do you go to? St. Thomas Aquinas. And what are you excited about on this fifth grade visit? Playing basketball. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right, so what's your name? Cora. What school are you from? St. Thomas. And what did you like about the fifth grade visit today? Um, the slime. It was really fun. Nice. Well, thanks for coming. So, what's your name? Jonah Carlin. And what school do you go to? Res. And what are you looking forward to about this fifth grade visit? The cookie. Yeah. I right, hope you have a good time.